to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 11, the Bible says, Lest he take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We welcome you today to our study of how Satan works. Friend, we don't want to be taken advantage of by Satan, and we don't want to be ignorant concerning his devices. And so in this second part of our series on how Satan works, we want to consider some other avenues Satan tries to get into my life and get into yours. We welcome you today to our study of uh, the nature of Satan, the enemy of God and man. We're so glad that you've joined us. We encourage you to get your Bible, have it ready, as we're going to be looking to the Word of God on this great topic today. As always, today's lessons are being brought to you by individual members and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, whether that be at worship on Sunday morning or Sunday night or for Wednesday Bible study. You will find people there who love God, who love the truth, and who are concerned about the souls of men and women. In fact, if you've got a, a Bible question, you'd like to know more about the gospel, more about the church or the plan of salvation or, or how Christians worship, you'll find people in the Lord's church who'd be happy to sit down, open up the Bible, and in kindness and love, study the Scripture with you. And so we encourage you to check out the Lord's Church in your area. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you as you study the Word of God in your own life. Won't you visit our website? thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our videos and audio, written material. We have lessons on every book of the Old Testament, every book of the New Testament, as, as well as a large variety of topical studies. They're all available to you free of charge, as well as transcripts, study questions, a whole good host of written material, Check out our website. We'd love for you to visit that. Everything we do, we make available free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of this series on Satan, we want to make that available to you. Visit our website, fill out our media request form. We can send you a digital download instantaneously, or if you need it in a hard copy on DVD or CD, we'll make that available to you free of charge as well. And friend, tell your neighbors and friends about our work as well. Let them know to be watching our program, visiting our website. That's a great tool for studying the Word of God in our own lives. And don't forget about our app for the smartphones in our fast-paced world where everybody's got a smart smartphone and everybody's so busy today, you can download the Gospel of Christ app. We give updates, notifications. You can watch and view all of our lessons there. It's a great way to study God's Word in our fast-paced world today. Let's now continue in this second part of our lessons on Satan concerning how Satan works. Remember, the Bible tells us don't let Satan take advantage of you. Don't be ignorant of his devices, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 11. And so in this series of lessons, we're thinking about how Satan tries to work into my life and yours. Our last lesson, we considered several of the more popular means by which Satan tries to work in people's lives. And today we're going to continue that by looking at scriptures that address this. How does Satan try to work in my life and yours today? Friend, we pick up today by realizing that Satan tries to work in our lives by hindering good works. Open your Bible to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 with me. We realize that one of the avenues Satan tries to, to thwart God's plan and discourage Christians is by hindering their good works. Listen to these words. Paul said, But we, brethren, having been taken away from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored more eagerly to see your face with great desire. Therefore we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again. But hear these words. But Satan 
hindered us. Paul wanted to go back and, and encourage these Christians and, and teach them more and, and work with them more. But there was a problem. Satan kept getting in the way of that good work. Friend, today when Christians try to help the uh, sick, when we try to preach the gospel, try to do good in our communities, we try to let the light of Jesus shine, you can rest assured in every avenue we're trying to do good, Satan is also trying to defeat that, slow that down, and thwart that. And so how do I defeat this device of the devil? Number one, when Satan tries to stop good works, be persistent. Don't give up easily. Uh, of course, naturally, when I think about persistence, I can't help but think about the persistent widow, Luke chapter 18. Listen, listen to this story Jesus told, which really the whole point is that of persistence. Luke 18, 2. There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. He would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I don't fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. What's the whole point there? This woman got what she wanted because she was persistent. He wasn't a godly man. He didn't really care about people. We would say, he's a pretty evil judge. But persistence paid off. Friend, be persistent. When good works start and there's a little bit of a hiccup, a little bump in the road, things don't look like they're going the way you don't give up easily. If it's a good work, keep after it. Look for open doors. When one door closes, another one opens. Revelation 2 verse 8, Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. And friend, there's not just one door, there are multiple avenues by which we can do good works. When one good work hits a roadblock, open up another one. Start another way. Don't let it discourage you completely. Although one way may be thwarted, another way, another door will open and God's work can go through that way. And then we mention this device. One of the ways Satan works in all of our lives is he uses doubt. Satan tries to get us to doubt God, to doubt ourselves, and to doubt the Word of God. Let me show you the classic passage. Look in Genesis chapter 3, and I want you to see how Satan used doubt here. Turn to the initial pages in the Bible in Genesis chapter 3, and I want you to look at what the Scripture says beginning in verse number 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God, in, has God indeed, has God really said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. Listen to the way Satan couches his question. Has God really said to you, You can't eat of every tree of the garden? She says, Well, no. God, in fact, said we could eat. But do you see the doubt Satan is casting there? And then his next statement, you'll not really die. Doubt God's motives, doubt God's word, and then doubt ourselves. Satan wants to use doubt in every opportunity he can in my life and yours. But when that doubt starts to creep in, when I doubt God, when I doubt myself, when I doubt the word of God, how do I, I need to see that as Satan working, but how do I overcome? How can I not be ignorant of this device of the devil? Faith is always the key to overcoming doubt. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask about God who gives to all liberally without reproach, it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, listen to this, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, tossed to and fro by the wind. Let not that man suppose he'll receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. When when doubt enters in, our faith needs to rise up and overcome that doubt. If I've got faith in God, faith in His Word, and enough faith in myself with the help of God, doubt really is not going to work in my life. And then what can we do? When doubt enters in, I need to pray that my faith will increase. Luke 17, 5, Jesus said, they prayed, increase our faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, Romans 10, 17. And so if our faith is going to be increased, 
The Word of God needs to increase in our lives. And when we compound those ideas in our... I mean, doubt's not going to find a foothold in my life and yours. And so don't doubt God. Don't doubt yourself. Don't doubt His Word. Let faith, true faith, Rise up in your heart and overcome the doubt that Satan is trying to use. And so faith is the key indeed to overcoming doubt. Another way that Satan tries to work, and especially in people who are dedicated to God's Word, is this. Satan will try to twist God's Word and use it against us. Genesis 3 again. God did not really say, did He? You will not surely die. God knows the day you eat it, you'll be like Him, knowing good. You'll be a God. That He wants to keep you knocked down. He don't want you to be like Him. Although God said it, it's really not true. He's going to twist God's Word. That's what He did in Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 through 7. Uh, if you're the Son of God, cast yourself down from the temple, for your own scripture says, I'll not allow him to be hurt. I'll give my angels charge over him. He'll not hurt himself in essence. And so if you're the Son of God, cast yourself down, because the Word of God says God won't allow you to be hurt. And so prove it. Well, that's, that's not what either one of those ideas is meant to teach. The passages in Psalms that the devil quotes are not meant as a test to God. Jump off and there's going to be some safety net down there. God won't allow you can do anything you want to yourself because God's not going to allow you to be hurt. That's not the idea. It was God's safety, God's protection, God's faithfulness over those who continue after Him. But here's what I'm trying to get you to see. Satan will take God's Word and try to twist that at every opportunity that he can to make us doubt God's Word, to make us trust it less, to make us think, well, why did God say that? Why did God do that? Is that really? Friend, I need to have a good working knowledge of the Bible. I need to be confident in my teaching of God and Scripture. And I need to realize I've got, this, this is the key to overcoming. To overcoming Satan twisting God's Word I need to not only study to show myself approved unto God, approve unto God, I need to rightly divide the Word. I need to know what applies to whom, when, what context this is talking about, who's God speaking to there, how does this apply to my life. I need to divide it as God meant for it to be given in the Scripture and not let that be twisted so easily. All right, another way Satan works. Satan enslaves or traps people to do His will. Look in your Bible in 2 Timothy chapter 2. You ever known anybody who just seemed like they couldn't get over something? You ever known somebody who just seemed like they were trapped, caught in a trap and just couldn't get out of it? Satan is going to try to enslave people. He's going to try to trap people. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. Listen to what the Bible says in verse number 26. Paul says that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. There's a trap, and some people get caught in that trap, and Paul said they've been taken captive to do his will. Uh, you can think, 1 Timothy 3, 7, we wear the wiles of the devil. Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. There is a trap. Satan is casting that net out in front of us. He wants to pull up the rope and trap us in it. Paul said, you've got to come to your senses. You know, when you think about how, think about people who are caught up in traps, people who are enslaved to something, the alcoholic, uh, the drug addict, the one who's caught up in sexual addiction, the one who's got the porn addiction. Addictions are one of the big ways that Satan takes people captive and traps them. Paul said, you've got to come to your senses and don't let Satan take you captive. Coming to your senses means you've got to think through. You've got to rationalize. You've got to realize what's important. You need help. Maybe overcome. Seek. If you're dealing with some addiction, seek help with that. Find some counselor, somebody who can help you with that. Um, Make yourself accountable to other people. And by all means, if you know you've got that addiction, whether it be drugs or alcohol, don't put yourself in a compromising position. Let people hold you accountable as well and look to God for the help. Don't get trapped in Satan's, in his own traps that he sets for us and others and, and all the things that we see involved with that. All right, let's think about some other ways that Satan works. 
in the scripture. Satan also works through sexual lust and lack of self-control. Look in your Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. This is a big one. In a world that pushes the, the lust and desires, in a world that, that tells us whatever passion you feel, it's okay to act on that. Don't say no to yourself. We got to realize that that's not true. That's Satan at work. Look, listen to 1 Corinthians 7. I want you to watch how Satan works here. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 5. Paul says to the married couple, Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. Well, Paul, why not come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. How does Satan work? Satan works through sexual lust and a lack of self-control. All of us have been given certain passions and desires. Inside the right realm, those are good and holy and right. Marriage is honorable, the bed undefiled, whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Hebrews 13, 4. But I've got to realize there's an approved place for that. And it's only inside the bond of marriage. And this is the key to overcoming this. Friend, you have to say no to yourself at times. The world says don't tell yourself no. Anything you want, you can have it. Fulfill your dreams, live life to the fullest, let's eat, drink, and be merry. That's not the Bible idea. We have to say no to ourselves. I cannot have as many sexual partners as I want to have. I cannot do anything with the lust of flesh I want to do. I cannot go out and just live it. That's, no. You've got to say no. One of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. Galatians 5, verses 19 through 25. And so Satan tries to work in that avenue. It's a big one today, and we need to realize that God does not approve of that at all. All right, let's think about some other ways Satan tries to work. Satan tries to work through greed in people's hearts today. Let me show you the classic example. Look in your Bible in Acts chapter 5, and I want you to see a scenario where Satan was definitely at work with greed. Acts chapter 5, verse 1. The love of money got into these two people's hearts. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife sold a possession. He kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, brought a certain part, laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said to Ananias, watch this now, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? The Bible says, and you have not lied to men, but to God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So fear came upon all, and all those who heard these things. Here, this, this couple, they have a piece of land. While it was theirs, they could have done what they wanted to with it. When they sold it, they could have done what they wanted to with the money. But the problem was, they lied about how much they got, and they acted like they gave everything to God, when in reality, they come back, kept some back for themselves. Wouldn't be anything wrong with that but they need to be upfront about it, okay? And so Peter says, why has Satan filled your heart? Friend, how did Satan fill Ananias and Sapphira's heart? I'll tell you how. They started seeing dollar signs. They started focusing too much on the treasures of this life, money, earthly possessions, and of course, the love of that money. The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Well, how do you overcome the problem of the love of money or greed or things like that? I believe the key verse is 1 Timothy chapter 6. I want to encourage you to open your Bible. If you struggle with greed, you struggle with money, if Satan tries to work into your heart in this avenue, here's the key to overcoming it. Look in your Bible in 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning in verse number 6. Let's think about what's really important. 1 Timothy 6, verse number 6. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. Having food and clothing, we, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, from which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Money's not wrong. Having money is not wrong. That's not the idea. The love of money, the desire to be rich, 
That's where the problem is. God has got to be first in my life. Seek first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, 33. When we put money and we put desires of this world and, and all these other things in front, that's where the problem rises. But hear these words. Paul says, I want you to get something. I don't want you to miss this. We brought nothing into this world and is certain we'll take nothing out. With food and clothing, here's the key. With these we shall be content. I've got to realize, naked I came from my mother's womb, naked shall I return. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Job chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. I've got to learn to be content with whatever I've got in life. Paul said, I've learned to be a base and I've learned to abound. I've learned in whatever state I'm in to be content. Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Contentment is the key idea here. God's going to take care of me. If I seek first the kingdom, God's going to provide everything else. But friend, I can assure you, Satan's popping out them $100 bills. Satan's flashing them uh, dollar signs before your eyes and he's trying to get us to give in to greed and, and the things of this world. Learn what's really important in this life. All right, how else does Satan work in my life and in yours today? I believe one of the ways that Satan works in a lot of people's lives and a lot of people's hearts is through discouragement. If Satan can't deaden me, if Satan can't destroy me, and he can't deceive me, and he can't devour me, he'll settle with just simply discouraging me. Look, at, look in your Bible at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 7. I believe a lot of people may never give in to certain things, lust of flesh, passions of life, greed, but somewhere along the way, Satan got in their life and they're, they're just not on fire. They've been discouraged and they stayed in that spot. Look in, listen to 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Paul says, And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me. Listen to this now. A messenger of Satan to buffet or discipline is the idea. A messenger of, messenger of Satan to buffet me, Paul says. And then he goes on to say in that verse, Lest I be exalted above measure. Say Paul had some kind of thorn in the flesh, some kind of fleshly problem. We don't know all about that, but it was definitely a messenger of Satan. Satan was trying to use that to work in Paul's life. Friend, when I think about problems that people face, people may have family problems, people may have health struggles, people may fight the fight every day of some addiction or sin, people may see the hypocrisy in the world and the church and Sometimes we get discouraged. All of us from time to time get discouraged. Discouragement is a real problem. Luke 18, 1, Jesus prayed. Jesus said, men ought always to pray and never lose heart. Losing heart, getting discouraged is a serious thing. It happens to everybody from time to time. How do you, keep, how do you overcome this device of the devil when family problems or spiritual problems or sin problems arise? How do I pick myself up out of that? Listen to Hebrews chapter 3. I, I believe this is key in overcoming discouragement. Hebrews chapter 3. There's a couple ideas here mentioned that I think are really, really big as it relates to not letting this device of the devil stay in my life. Listen to Hebrews 3 verse 12 and 13. Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. I think this is a big part. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. When I'm discouraged, I need, I need God's help. You know, always to pray and never lose heart. I need to pray more than I've ever prayed. But we also need to encourage or exhort one another daily. We need other people's help. In Exodus 17, as they're fighting the battle in Ai, and as God told Moses, to, as long as he held his hands up, They'd win the battle, and as Moses' hands got weary and he began to drop them down, they began to lose. What did they do in that? They got her, and they got another individual on the other side, and they propped, they helped hold Moses' hands up. Moses needed help. He couldn't do it all by himself. Same is true for me and you. When I face discouragement, I can't do it by myself. I can do all things through Christ. I need God's help. I need Christ's help. And I need the family of God's help. We need to encourage and uplift one another as much as we can in every way and try to overcome the problems that Satan throws at us in this life. All right, how else does Satan work? 
I want to mention one more because sometimes we hear this a lot, even inside the Lord's church. Satan works through busybodies and idle hearts in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ sometimes today. Listen to 1 Timothy chapter 5. I want you to hear what Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 11 through 15. Paul says, But refuse the younger widows, for when they begin to grow wanton against Christ, they desire to marry, having condemnation because they cast, uh, cast off their first faith. And besides, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, not only idle, but gossips and busybodies, saying things which they ought not. Therefore I desire that the younger widows marry, bear children, manage the house. Listen to this. Give no opportunity to the adversary to speak reproachfully. And then Paul takes it a little further. For some have already turned aside after Satan. The, the busybodies, the, the idle hearts, the gossipers in the church, the people who will say, have you heard what so-and-so did? Uh, you know about their business that's going on? Have you heard about the problems in their life? Have you seen all the things that... Wait a minute now. The idle hearts, the busybodies, the gossips, the people who are going around spreading rumors. Friend, I need to realize that's not what God wants. How, how, how do we as Christians defeat this device of the devil? It's very simple. Stay busy and mind your own business. And the Bible teaches both of those. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58 says, Be sober, be vigilant, or rather we're to be busy in the work of the Lord. We don't know the day of the Lord's coming. And 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 11, We've got to mind our own business about the things that are ours and not everybody else's. And so stay busy. Don't be getting all caught up in other people's business. And Satan won't be able to work in your life through this device. And so friend, we hope today that some of the avenues we've presented concerning these devices of the devil, you'll find helpful and encouraging. And we hope each of us won't let Satan take advantage of us and we won't be ignorant of his devices. We hope you'll join us next time as we study more from the Word of God. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.